Welcome to Asheville, North Carolina. My name is John, and if you're new here, we explore everything travel related. Today, we're exploring Asheville, which is famous for their arts, their music, and of course, beer. So obviously, we're gonna be exploring the arts district, some of the music scene, and of course, a brewery or two. Before we start our adventure, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that really helps us build our content. Now join me as we begin our adventure. Pack Square Park is at the center of Asheville. It's a hub of activity for family, children, and pets. Huge green space that you could just enjoy a drink or a picnic and has festivals and markets that are as fun to enjoy for everyone. The biggest festival at Pack Square Park is Shindig on the Green. It is the oldest and first folk festival in America. It was started in 1928 as a way to bring Southern Appalachian Mountain folk music to the city and mainstream audience. It's really remarkable of how long it's even run, and I'm sure it's jam-packed with people when they have it. One of the unique features in Pack Square Park is Splashville. It's an interactive fountain that family and children can go into the fountains and cool off on a hot summer day, and it's really fun to enjoy. And free. And completely free, which is great for a budget traveler. <laughs> While this may not be Poppy's favorite thing in Asheville, it's clearly loved by children and family. And honestly, I think it's a great way to cool off in the middle of the day. Coming to downtown Asheville is absolutely stunning, especially the architecture and the buildings. Some of these buildings were built in the 20s and have an Art Deco type of vibe. And some of them were really lucky to survive as they were built right before the crash of 29 and the Great Depression. But they had construction debt, which ensured that they still had to pay off those costs. And that meant that they were able to maintain them and keep them the way they were since they owed that debt. It is such a hot day. We found this place that's Double D's Coffee and Dessert, which sells obviously different drinks, coffee, and we got a nice lemonade, which should be super refreshing. But what's really cool about this particular location is it's a double-decker bus, and it's basically to go. The art that they have has a theme and they rotate it. Right now it's the big Lebowski movie, if you're a fan of that. From what the barista told us, the owner is a huge, probably number one fan of the Big Lebowski. So it's really cool that they do that. And then their drink specials also match with the theme. We got a Rolling Jesus lemonade, which should be interesting. Let me taste it. It's Desert Parent. Ooh, it's like more of a sour, sour kind of fruity yeah. taste. It's kind of good. I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I would probably prefer something a little bit more sweeter, but I think this is right up Andrea's alley. Andrea and I have been super curious about this La Zoom bus tour. They do comedy, beer, arts, music, you name it, bus tour, but it seems super interactive and everyone seems to be having a blast. If we had a little bit more time, we would definitely sign up for it. Andrea found the Bumpkin Stone, which is supposed to be the sister stone of the Blarney Stone in Ireland. If you're familiar with the Blarney Stone, if you kiss it, it gives you good luck. Well, with the Bumpkin Stone, if you kiss it, it confirms the gift of speech or locusity, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. Right in downtown Asheville, we stumbled across Lexington Glassworks. And if you remember our video about Corning, we love everything glass, artwork, and this has super bright colors, which we love. But this is just one of the studios that you can see across the town and area. The South Slope Mural Trail is a two mile loop with 17 stops that will show you different pieces of uh, street art that are iconic to the area. So let's go explore and see what artwork we can find.
The coolest thing about the mural trail is that there's new murals and new artists popping up every time, such as this one that's being made right now. The trail is a great way to see different parts of the town as well as different pieces of artwork. Some artwork celebrates creativity and innovation. Other pieces of artwork celebrate the history of the town, but it's a great way to explore. So grab a drink and explore on foot. The farmer's market here is huge and it's a great way to dip your toes into Asheville. They have produce, coffee, all delicious snacks. So let's go explore together. We made it only just three stalls in this massive complex and we were roped in immediately and bought some pickles. We still need to get some delicious snacks to go, so let's uh, explore a little bit more. Andrew and I found probably the snack to have, a massive giant apple fritter. I feel like you can't go wrong with this delicious treat. We just finished the first building, on to the next. This farmer's market is huge. They have three huge sized buildings, a garden center, wholesale center, as well as a full service cafe and restaurant. So there's just so many options to choose from. I think Andrea and I feel overwhelmed with the options. The farmer's market was fantastic. We found a nice shaded spot where we're gonna enjoy our apple fritter. But I think what was really cool about this place is that you had local shops where you can support the local economy. Um, Asheville is known for their food scene, but this place is a great way to start your day. And you can find something that you may not necessarily think you need, such as pickles or maybe an apple fritter. Welcome to Asheville's River Arts District. Just like the name implies, this district is filled with artists, restaurants, brewers. And this area at one point was filled with mills and warehouses, but now it's filled with artists and everything creative. Let's go explore the district together. Obviously, this area is filled with studios, but just like the name implies, there is also street art and paintings that you can see all over the district. With at least 270 different artists, it can be overwhelming. You have some artists that are a little bit more traditional with painting and sculpture. Then you have artists that are a little bit more untraditional with the materials or style that they use. So there's a taste for everyone in the district. Since this used to be in the industrial area, it's right by French Broad River. So there's a nice river trail that you could park your car, walk to the locations, and what's even better for people that travel on a budget, parking's completely free, which is a huge perk in a big city like Asheville. Now the trail itself is maybe 1.5 to about two miles. So definitely plan for at least a couple hours or maybe even half a day to explore the district. Oh, and the silo behind me is an icon of the district as well as Asheville. You can see artists from all over the local community have left their mark on the silo so it's worth stopping and taking a few pictures. Since this was the old industrial district, all of these buildings have so many different artists that are in collaboratives, but not just artists. These buildings also have restaurants and breweries that it's much more than just art. Wedge in particular was recommended to us as it has art studios, brewery, and great space to just enjoy a drink and overlook the, the scenery. So you want to definitely check out each of these, but Wedge is on the other side of the tracks, but don't worry. Since we're on this side, there's some other recommendations that were given to us that we're going to go see. The Marquee was one of the art collaboratives that was recommended to us, so let's go inside and see it. This place is huge. We had to stop at the information desk and guess what? There are 300 artists here in this building, not rotating or on retainer, 
here presently. 300 artists and vendors selling all different types of artwork. Some have studios in other buildings, um, but it's just phenomenal that they have so many people here. Also, at the front of the building, they have a bar selling alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, and you're free to take it around and enjoy beverages as you check out the art. So let's take a look at our, everything around here and see what we can find. When in Rome, you gotta participate and have a little bit of a drink. Some of the artists here have their own studios in other buildings, but this is a great way to promote and sell their artwork and be among their fellow artists in one location. Local Cloth sells fiber artwork made by local artists in the area, and it's just spectacular to see what kind of fiber artwork can be done and made here. So they have different animal ferns as well as plant ferns and the angora rabbit seems like it's very, very soft. I feel like it would make a perfect pillow. I think people are about weaving it. Well, weaving it into a perfect pillow, maybe, a pillowcase. <laughs> what about pillows? I value pillows very highly. The musk ox. Let's see, that is here. Ooh. It's a little more scruffy. Oh, it's way softer than I thought it would be. Huh. Wow. Who knew a musk ox? It's so soft. This is the lovely Pink Dog Collaborative. Yeah, and this is not something I usually do, but I'm, I, I, this is an old piece that was just up against the wall and I just took it out and I'm gonna figure out where it wants to go because I have no idea. We met Lynn and Sarah who are artists that work with acoustic wax, and it's really remarkable. I didn't even know how you can make like a wax painting or a piece of artwork, but it was super knowledgeable. And this is the thing I really love about the Arts District. You go to any studio and you can talk to the artists, figure out their influences, and learn some of the techniques that they use. I need a coffee refill.
We got some light refreshing drinks from Grime and it is at the heart of the River Arts District. It's also at the center of Black Wall Street, which is an incubator for black business owners. And this is going to be the event of the video. Andrea and I are going to play Rock'em Sock'em Robots. And she's going down, so stay tuned. One of these, I think our buttons are wrong. My arms don't push down. You gave me the busted one. No, mine's just as busted. My buttons don't work. Hold on. Stop. I think my Rock'em Sock'em robots, press, maybe press. they're on the other side because they, how did you get your to lock in? You gotta press the boom, 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 boom. Oh, who's the winner? <laughs> <laughs> I believe by a knockout, the one and the only J. Lou Travels has conquered Andrea in an epic match of Rock'em Sock'em Robots. <laughs> Looks like you guys have like an arcade in the back as well. Yeah, well, you guys have quite the setup then. Yeah, and there's um, if you go inside, there's inside seating and there's a bocce ball court in the back. Oh, yeah. interesting. High Wire Brewing Company has many different locations all over the Asheville area, but their headquarters is in the middle of the River Arts District, and we got a flight uh, here to try different beers. But I think what is the most impressive thing when you first enter is all the art that they have, all the colors, it just really pops. And you feel like you're part of the artwork in the brewing company. So we're gonna try a few beers. We got a couple IPAs, a sour, and a Pilsner. But we really love the River Arts District. Going from studio to studio can be so overwhelming. You could spend a week just exploring all the art studios, which we don't have time to do. But we headed to High Wire Brewing Company and have a light beverage, which the headquarters location is in the middle of the district, but they do have other locations in Asheville. I think our favorite part of the district was speaking to each of the artists and finding out what inspires them, also learning a little bit about their techniques. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy an afternoon beverage at High Wire. Cheers. Asheville is known for their beers and breweries, and we're going to check out a local craft brewery called Wicked Wheat, so follow me as we go inside. Of course, I had to get an IPA, which I got their new beer that they have out, Coastal Love. Andrea got uh, New Beginnings, which is a vodka, lavender type of drink with um, buttermilk, I believe, or butter butterfly. Butterfly. Butterfly PT, which is interesting, but really cool color. They are super dog friendly and they allow dogs out on their outside section, which of course we've got Poppy who's hiding underneath us at the moment. But they have a full service restaurant. Looks like they have tours and a gift shop. So we'll order some food in a little bit, but we'll enjoy our drinks on this hot summer day. So far the drinks have definitely delivered. The beer IPA was really, really good. Now we just got our food. Andrew got tomato bisque with grilled cheese, which I, looks really good. I can smell it. Um, and then I got a chicken sandwich and some fries to go with it. So we're going to dig in. 
And another beer. And another beer, because it's so good here. Andrea and I really enjoyed Wicca Weed. Good food, good drinks, and I think Poppy gives it two paws up. And uh, looks like she acquired something while she was here. Hold on. Oh. Poppy, you need to stop stealing my hat. <laughs> Obviously, this one is into fashion. So, let's see what else we can see in Asheville, right? Asheville is known for their music venue. The Orange Pill is just one of the locations that you can check out uh, different musical performances going on. But you can also find buskers all over the streets in Asheville trying to make it. So it's really cool to see the, the music as well as the artistic talent booming in this town. What a whirlwind tour of Asheville. There is so much to do and definitely something for everyone. You can't beat the art scene or the craft brews. But for now, we're ending our night and our time in Asheville. But stay tuned for more adventures by subscribing. And until next time, keep on exploring.